first one. You did? What is that? Thank you. Thank you. What's up, guys? RBG here, bringing you my breakdown slash discussion on the newly announced Blade reboot for the MCU. A while back, I launched a poll asking you guys if you'd be interested in me covering comic book movie news, and a good majority of you all said you'd love if I branched off into this medium of entertainment. So I'm happy to announce that this is my first official Marvel Cinematic Universe related video. And coincidentally enough, it's going to be about a character who single-handedly changed the landscape of live-action superhero movies and helped the MCU be what it is today. Before Marvel Studios became the king of the box office, they were struggling to stay afloat financially. So in order to keep from going under, they began licensing out rights to their property in the form of live action movies. One of the first properties they licensed off was Blade, a character that wasn't really known unless you were an avid comic book reader. And admittedly, at the time as a kid, I hadn't really heard of him outside of the 94 Spider-Man animated series. So as I watched the live action film starring Wesley Snipes, it eventually dawned on me that I had seen him in that cartoon. And I know that was the case for a lot of 90s kids back then. Like they probably convinced their parents to let them see the movie, which was R rated because they realized who Blade was based off seeing him in the Spider-Man animated series. Let me know if you came to that realization in the comment section below. But anyways, despite mixed reviews from critics, the film went on to be a commercial success and one of the first big superhero films to gross over $100 million at the box office. It pretty much blew people's minds because the director David S. Goyer at New Line Cinema proved that comic book adapted films could be taken seriously if done correctly. The movie was so successful that it initially created a ripple effect. Other Marvel properties will continue that trend of making Hollywood a ton of money. We had the 2000 X-Men film that would go on to make over $200 million, and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man that would become not only the first superhero film to gross over $100 million in a single weekend, but also the highest grossing superhero film at the time, hitting a worldwide grossing of over $800 million before being dethroned by the Dark Knight seven years later. So Marvel and the creative minds behind these smash hits had their finger on the pulse of something good. Fun fact, a few years prior to Blade hitting the silver screen, Wesley Snipes originally voiced interest in playing Marvel's Black Panther, but the movie was canned due to limited technology and a lack of faith in the producers. Fast forward to 2018 and Black Panther is the highest grossing solo MCU film. So this just goes to show how impactful Wesley Snipes and Blade were in carving a lane for the awesome Marvel movies. And now it's come full circle, because after getting all the announcements to the new Phase 4 films at San Diego Comic Con, the head of Marvel Studios Kevin Feige revealed that they'd in fact be doing a Blade reboot after calling out a new actor who'd be portraying the character. And as you can see, that actor is two-time Academy Award winner Mahershala Ali. And I'm fairly pleased with this announcement because he's a stellar actor. I initially thought they'd recast Wesley Snipes since we saw that it's not completely out of the realm of possibilities to bring back an actor who portrayed a character in a non-MCU film, especially if you've seen who they revealed in Spider-Man Far From Home. But Mahershala Ali is a good choice. The dude's filmography already consists of two Marvel-related properties. If you're familiar with the Marvel Luke Cage Netflix series, you'll recognize him as Cornell Stokes, aka Cottonmouth in Season 1. Technically, that series was supposed to be set in the MCU, but as you all know, Marvel's TV division and movie division don't really get along. Even though there were a ton of instances referenced from the MCU filmverse in the Netflix shows, the films never really acknowledged their TV counterparts. Eventually, the Netflix series stopped trying to remind the viewers that they existed in the MCU. They kind of became self-contained within their own little TV universe. But you still get little tie-in references to other Marvel ABC shows like the Cloak and Dagger series. Luke Cage, huh? Heard about him. Heard he's bulletproof. He looks just like... I guess, you know? Ooh. But that's about it. Anyways, Mahershala Ali also voiced Aaron Davis, the Prowler, in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, so he has a good track record when it comes to working in superhero-related media. If you remember when Luke Cage first debuted on Netflix, it caused the servers to crash because it was the topic of conversation, and everyone praised Ali's performance as Cottonmouth. To this day, people love and hate that season because after they killed off the character, the quality instantly dropped. No one really cared for the second big baddie who was revealed as Luke Cage's older brother in the later half of the series. 
But how ironic is it that this isn't the first time that Kevin Feige has worked on a Blade movie? If you look at his filmography, you can kind of see that he's been in this game for a long time. He's worked as a co-producer on some of the early Marvel properties that were scattered out to all the big name studios before they ultimately came home. He's worked on the first three X-Men films, the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, the first two Fantastic Four films, and Daredevil. He's even co-produced Blade Trinity. So I guess you could say he was analyzing what worked back then even though he didn't have as much creative freedom as he does now. Along with the Phase 4 movie reveals, he also announced a sequel for Doctor Strange titled Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And that's going to be the first film to kick off the MCU horror genre. So it's safe to assume that this new Blade will be part of that darker part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you think about it, Doctor Strange has always been one of those supernatural characters that has those gothic and horror undertones. I wouldn't be surprised if they introduce Blade in his film or another superhero film before he ultimately gets his own solo outing, because that's what they did for characters like Spider-Man. We've already seen the origins done for the characters, so it'd be the best bet to just introduce Blade in this expanded world where he's already been in action and become the vampire hunter he is today. I find it funny that Marvel Studios has found a way to include Spidey and Doctor Strange in a film every year since their MCU debut. So even though Strange is yet to have another solo film, we've gotten a good taste of him in films like Thor Ragnarok, Infinity War, and Endgame. That's the beauty of the MCU right there. But anyways, the only thing that wasn't expanded upon is if Blade will have his own solo film or a solo show for the Disney Plus streaming service. Currently there are 5 shows that were announced alongside 5 movies for Phase 4. And considering the fact that Mahershala Ali was just in a Marvel related series, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be on the TV side of things. And considering Blade's R rated history, Marvel Studios might be looking for a way to keep his violence and graphical tone similar to how the Netflix Marvel heroes were handled. But if he gets his own movie, don't expect him to keep that hard R rating. Kevin Feige has been pretty adamant about keeping his MCU films PG 13. You had me at God. Uh, you know, you know what? No, it's PG-13, you're gonna like it. Uh. I think it's totally possible to keep that same level of violence since the way he kills vampires isn't too graphic. Because if you notice, they only burst into flames when he kills them. The strong language is obviously going to be turned down, but if Marvel is ballsy enough, they can allow one F-bomb to stay within that PG-13 sweet spot. But who knows? Plans are still being laid out and we don't know when the famous Daywalker will make his highly anticipated MCU debut. I'm still waiting to see what their take will be on this version because there are so many cool iterations to borrow from in the comics. I'm hoping it's a mix of the 616 and Ultimate Comics version. I think it's safe to assume that he'll be a dumb pure, which is a half human and half vampire hybrid because that's the most commonly used aspect that makes the character appeal to audiences. They call him the Daywalker because he has all the abilities of a vampire but is pretty much immune to most of their weaknesses like sunlight. Originally, he was nothing more than an average human that was immune to being turned into a vampire. Like he didn't really have the superhuman strength or speed like he has now. He just relied on his advanced combat skills for killing vampires. But obviously that was changed for the films and later comics. Fun fact, Blade didn't get his half-human, half-vampire origin until the Spider-Man animated series episode, Neogenic Nightmare, that aired a year before his live-action movie hit the silver screens. He was the son of a vampire man who had fallen in love with a human woman who left Blade in foster care before she became a vampire herself. It wouldn't be until a year after his first movie that he'd get his Daywalker abilities where he was bitten by Michael Morbius in Volume 2 of Peter Parker Spider-Man the comic. So there's a little history lesson for you guys. But anyways, what are your thoughts on this news? Are you happy with the casting choice? One choice that fans thought would be perfect was casting Michael J. White considering the fact that his likeness was recently used in the new Wolverine vs. Blade comic. I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already because it's a good read. I also want to know if you think Blade will be in the films or in Disney's new streaming service. Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video and want to see more MCU related videos like this, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another MCU related video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.